<clears throat> what is up guys and of course welcome back to another episode of who was really better as of this week we're going to cover the two Im intimidated fire types in arcanine versus incineroar and we actually have both of these pokemon before in our video but well let's just say that arcanine was versus entei where we did leave arcanine for the winner while entei got him better since then it has got that much better and Incineroar was facing Houndoom, where we let Houndoom win, because this was before the Mew Tutor and the Hidden Ability was available. Well, let's just say this, as I said in that video, that had all of these come to promotion, Incineroar would, would be deemed better, and so it is. Incineroar is one of the greatest Pokemon in U right now, and for all the right reasons. And Arcanine, while falling to RU, is still an extremely viable fire type, and it's up to me to course go over the overarching teams and move pull and stats to see which one of these two really are better. We're gonna cover, of course, Pokemon introduced first, that is Arcanine. Now, I said this before, and I will say this again fire type as a soul combination is a very, very good defensive typing. The only thing holding that type combination in its own right is Stealth Rock Weakness, which is a very, very big deal. And of course, its weaknesses are to fairly common things, but you guys can see on the screen right it resists six types, so it's bug, fairy, fire, grass, ice, and steel. So I'll say it's very viable and good combination to other other type compost. So you know the weaknesses in course ground and rock and water is while an issue, I wouldn't say the worst thing in the world. Now it got ability from Arcanine has flash, fire, intimate, and justified. Justified is not something you don't see every day. Uh, While well, it does boost, I believe, your attack by one when you hit with a dark move, Flash Fire and Intimidate are infinitely better. Flash Fire, of course, giving your total immunity to fire hit type move, plus boosts your fire type move by 50%. But Intimidate is always the better option, mainly because it does lower your opponent opposing, opposing Pokemon's attack. Sorry for that. Um, and since Arcanine is so mixed bulky, it can kind of use that to its, well, to advantage actually. The status version of Arcanine is very, very well rounded. Uh, it has a actually a pretty scary base stat total of 560, which is comparable to potentially a legendary Pokemon. It isn't one, but it most certainly has the stats to almost become one. So versus Knight and HP, which is very high for a fire type, 110 for attack, mixed defenses of 80. Which is fairly decent considering, like I said, that, that HP stat and then a color special attack at 100, which is overall really good. In 95 base speed, while for an offensive Pokemon that would be considered bad, but Arcanine isn't necessarily built for being offensive, it actually is mostly built for being defensive, so it's a very high speed here. But it can be used for offensive stats. And just overall, the Arcanine stat distribution is a very, very fair one. There really aren't anything. That I would consider bad on it. If anything, it missing what I would say something that is leaping, that means something that is higher than normal, 110 in, in attack, while high is not extremely high. But yeah, besides that, it really has no flaw stat wise. And overall, really, really decent Pokemon with a very, very good ability to comprehend with that. And decent stab, and of course, a fire alone, which is, as I said, good defensive typing. But, as you guys know, a Pokemon is only as good as its move pool allows it to be. So how good is Arcanine's move pool? It's, it's really good. So when it comes to what it learns naturally, there really aren't that many things that stand out. We have Flare Blitz, for example, which is a decent one. And Extreme Speed, which is definitely a decent one. Uh, mainly because, let, let's face it, plus two priority is always good. That means you can focus yourself on being more offensive and even go defensive without investing yourself in speed. You also get the Bite and Thunder Fan, which is alright for the situation. Um, when it comes to team move, you get the likes of Solar Beam, Flame Forward, Fire Blast, Vizard, Air Lace, which is really, really weird. Overheat, Will Always, which is a good defensive option, and then Bulldoze and Wild Charge. And Wild Charge do cover what I think Thunder Fang is lacking. It really isn't strong enough. Wild Charge do cover that, and of course, potentially being forced to deal with water types. When it comes to egg moves, here where things start to actually become a little cooler. Uh, we got Butter Slam, we got Crunch, which is definitely great. Uh, Flare Blitz, which is essential. Morning Sun, which does allow you to be defensive uh, because you can recover yourself HP. Iron Tail, Double Kick, Close Combat, which is really awesome. Consider a Rock Tap. Otherwise, would be able to deal with Arcanine really well. Close Combat do mean that they need to stay up on their toes. And of course, Burn Up, which only work once per 
switching, but it's a very, very high uh, special attack move with 130 base attack, but its main focus here is that you lose your fire type by using it, which for Arcanine would mean that you hit yourself naturally against everything, um, which does work defensively well for it, but as I said, but the defenses. Um, fire type is still a very good defensive type, but if you expect your opponent to have Earthquake or Stone Edge, you could be great to go with the defensive side and actually use Burnout to parry that attack. Uh, when it comes to Ultra Sun and Mew Tutors, what it did get this season, or this season, this generation, it really isn't, what I would say, something that deviated from the other generations, but with Dragon Pulse, which just stands out, and Outrage. Uh, other than that, if you want to use that, you have Laser Focus, which could be great with C. And yeah, besides that, I guess you should cover uh, transfer move, which aren't pl are plenty, I should say, but aren't necessarily that good. Uh, we'll have the Lies of Mudslap, which could be great with C from over a special set. And then we have Reflect and Teleport, which is really, I just want to mention Teleport, like, I feel it's funny. Uh, but besides that, it's very clear what Arcanine can do. And most of those sets are heavily built on it being either offensive or defensive. And it pulls those, those two roles off, well, with flying colors. The defensive set with Morning Sun has usually Flare Blaze or Close Combat, it's good with Toxic. Um, close combat could be changed for extreme speed, but overall very hard to switch into, even if you have an uninvested 110 base attack, it still, since this flare blitz is such a strong stab move, hits you very, very hard. And it's able to stall break a lot of things, and does that really alright. Um, the offensive set is kind of weird, I would say. There are things here that are working, I really prefer the choice of bandit set myself. Uh, would get it would potentially be you no know, life or set with flame charge. But the Bandit set is hard to switch into. Flare Blitz, as stated before, very hard stab attack. Wild Shards cover the worst. Then we have Crunch and Extremes, which usually fills the void of Wild Shards, could be a potential option in there. But overall, Arcanine extremely balanced, have very, very clear defined role, and it does very well. And just overall, extremely complete Pokemon. And has been that since Generation 1, though stood out, of course, since Generation 4 at best, with, of course. Flash fire and intimidating to do together with a very very fair special and offensive split with its stab move, which clearly saw a lot more than the previous generation could before. So Arcanine, one of the best fire types in the game, if not the best, and it's whether or not actually Incineroar can compete. I think thank god it can. So in the risk of repeating myself, the combination in Incineroar is a dark fire combination instead. What that means is well, it mostly means for the worst for Incineroar, because that isn't necessarily a good defensive typing. While it does have initiatives, it remains basically the same type of resistances, but it'll actually get another weakness in fighting. And while fire do parry the likes of actually what dark types are weak to, such as um, bug, it still isn't enough, I would say. Though Incineroar's combination does allow it to be very effective against ghost type, with immunity and psychic, we do resist the likes of dark, fire, ghost, grass, ice, and steel, and a weak to the likes of a fighting ground, rock, and water. So, mm, yeah. Like I said, not the worst combination, but it definitely isn't as good as a soul fire type. Uh, combination of abilities, though, blaze and intimidate. Intimidate is always the option here. Uh, while blaze is a good thing, I do believe it works more for Pokemon such as Cyphlosion, for example, which are speed enough to abuse that. So yeah, kind of getting to the flaw of Incineroar, which is its speed here. Because besides that, well, it's clearly more capable than Arcanine in the defensive department. 9 to 5 in its HP, the 19 both defenses. So yeah, it's more defensive, alright. It even hits harder, 1 in 15 in its attack and 8 in special attack. Yeah, lower special attack. But yeah, I don't think necessarily that matters. But the speed here at 60, yeah... This Pokemon gets very often compared to actually Swampers in this stat distribution. It is because it's very, very well balanced, but the speeds here aren't necessarily up there. But overall, the Fire and Dark is a good stab combination offensively, and usually Psychic types tend to be rather fragile or even worse, actually very bulky and not that speedy. I think Incineroar parry both of those options and becomes very, very interesting to look at in an offensive area. But yeah, the speedster is holding us back, if anything. But I wouldn't say that makes a Pokemon bad. Uh, what makes this Pokemon good or bad, of course, I would find a mistake with that for, 
uh, would be to consider its move pool, but I think its move pool, due to this generation in Ultra Sun and Move, did solve a lot of things that it was lacking, and that was actually a fair stab move besides the Tarkus Lariat. So when it comes to its um, level up moves, there are a few things here that stands out. The Tarkus Lariat, as I mentioned before, and then we're the likes of uh, Flare Blitz, Crush Up, and Outrage. So really, really cool things here overall. Um, I guess I should mention Throat Shop, though I don't believe that's the more common move here, since Darkless Lariats do parry what I think the most. Then when it comes to the TM moves, we have a few things here that stands out. We have Bulk Up, we have Earthquake, Leech Life, which is very cool. Here the likes of Brick Break, Torment, Flame Chart, of course, Low Sweep, Focus Blast, will o -Wisp, Brutal Swing, Shadow Claw, Sword Stance, Bulldoze, Swagger, don't you Swagger, and U-Turn and Snarl. So a lot of things here stands out, even Dark Pulse, I have to cover that of course since it's a stab move, but this Pokemon gets set up, which I think is the most important part, and also gets something that I think is very very important, since as I mentioned before, Arcanine could parry Rock-type due to close combat, while in Incineroar don't have that, it does have actually Earthquake, which isn't as risky and more consistent, so I definitely prefer that over the other. Uh, also for egg moves here, there are, the thing here that stands out is Nasty Plot and Fake Out. Nasty Plot is very good because this means that this Pokemon can hit on both spectrums. We have Sword Stance and we have Nasty Plot. And yeah, just overall, it's very good. Power Trip is also there, which is basically um, a stored power move, but physical and dark type. Basically, the more setup you get, the stronger the Power Trip will get. And while it's kind of risky on Incineroar, it still gets it, so... For his word, it's very cool. And then, of course, on the Tura side, we have the lights of Fire Punch, we have Thunder Punch, Low Kick, Iron Head, Super Power, Focus Punch, Drain Punch, Stomping Tantrum, and yet again, of course, the Throat Shop. But overall, here, the thing that stands out for me here with Incineroar is that it has mixed ways of actually setting up. While it does lack recovery like Arcanine, it does have ways of setting up, and it has Pivot in U turn. And just overall, the combination speaks for itself. I think offensively, um, Incineroar is more complex, more... more yeah, complex I think is the right word. It has a broader variety of what it can do. Arcanine, while very one-dimensional, is effectively one of the best Pokemon to do these one-dimensional roles. So I don't believe Arcanine is worse off here of anything, but Incineroar has a more complex style of battling and can actually fit more into more teams. So what this matchup boils down to is definitely a personal preference, I would definitely stretch that. But as I said before, Arcanine does probably what it does best in the game. It's a fire type that can be offensive and defensive and pulls off those two roles. Well, pretty much flawless, so there really aren't anything holding that Pokemon back. And this feature does allow it to be a really effective defensive Pokemon. And in Cinder, on the other hand, while it isn't that speedy, it's very balanced, it has a good stamp combination, it lacks Pursuit, which unfortunately it lacks Recovery, which is even more unfortunate, but it can Pivot and it can set up. This is a Pokemon that does use the Sea Crystal to the fullest and overall becomes, as I said, a more complex Pokemon because it can hit more specific Pokemon effectively. And for me, and this is, as I said before, it's a personal preference here, I think that makes a Pokemon better. I think Incineroar is better than Arcanine because they have option to do a lot more things than Arcanine. I would say in a smoking environment that Arcanine is more effective, but Incineroar is just a Pokemon that glues in very well for a lot of teams and overall becomes better for it and that is why Incineroar wins this matchup. And I think it's tough to say because I know a lot of people liked Arcanine and I actually like it myself. But just Incineroar is more complex to be able to deal with a lot more threats. It's even without the recovery in like Handoom having of course a Sucker Punch, it just works. It's one of those really, really bulky Pokemon that can actually soak a hit and retaliate and usually KO something while it's doing that. And that overall makes that Pokemon in my opinion of course more desirable. And just overall, I think Incineroar due to U-turn actually is better. So I really hope you guys agree with me here, and even if you aren't, make sure to of course write down below why you aren't, because you know I'll see both sides of the spectrum here. If, if you like being a more bulkier player, I can easily see why Arcanine would consider to be better here. 
I like to play offensive myself, which means that I will, of course, have a personal preference towards that. I just like the options of doing more than just being offensive or offensive. Defensive, offensive, and it kind of rhymes, isn't it? Uh, and the Cinderor solves that role of being especially offensive or physically offensive or pivoting or scarfing or abandoned. The only thing it doesn't pull off all right is defensive, and you know, I don't believe that's such a big thing to lack. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode and join us next week for, of course, this matchup. <laughs>